So let's do partial metric invariance and dig down at the factor level. In a previous video, I showed you how to do measurement invariance for configural metric and scalar, but I only showed you how to dig down into the configural problems. Let's look into metric problems. With this syntax, the only new stuff is the constrained lines that I've commented out. Notice they're the exact same as the unconstrained lines, except I've added label constraints for the loadings. I've also removed the other two, scalar and metric, for this analysis. We don't need those two in order to get the chi-square and degrees of freedom. So the model we're going to run to start is just the unconstrained model. These are not commented out. These are commented out. So this is the unconstrained model. Let's go ahead and run this and jump down to the model fit information. And we want to look at the chi-square test of model fit. The chi-square in this case is 233.701. I'm just going to copy that and go over to the stats tools package, which is available on the stat wiki. And for the unconstrained model in this chi-square difference tab, I'll paste the chi-square. The degrees of freedom were 102. 102. All right. Now let's go get a fully constrained model just to see if this compares well to the metric invariance test we already did. So to do that, you just comment out the unconstrained lines and remove the comments on the constrained lines. Save it, run it again, jump down to the model fit information, check out the chi-square test of model fit 249416, paste this in the fully constrained, and the degrees of freedom 114. And you'll see that this is invariant, and the p-value for that chi-square difference test is 0.205, which is about what we saw in the metric invariance test in the previous video. But let's pretend we did not achieve invariance. The p-value was less than 0.05, or whatever our threshold is. What we'd have to do is go explore this at the factor level. We can do this by unconstraining one factor at a time. So let's start with CR. To do this, we just remove the comment on the unconstrained line and add a comment to the constrained line. Now our whole model is constrained on each factor, except for CR. The CR factor is estimated freely. If this improves the chi-square difference test result, then we'll know that the CR factor is the one causing the problems with our invariance test. So let's save this, run it, jump down to model fit, chi-square test, 245, 824. We'll put this in the fully constrained chi-square, even though it's not fully constrained. And then we'll put the degrees of freedom over here, which is 110. And you'll see that the p-value actually decreased. Whereas it was 0.205, it's now 0.146. So releasing CR did not help our invariance test. Again, we would only do this if our invariance test failed. But I'm showing you just in case yours does fail. So what would we do next? Well, we'd go back and reconstrain CR and unconstrain F and try again. If that didn't work, we try it with part. So let's do that. Let's save this again, run it. Model fit, chi-square, 247.675, same degrees of freedom. That actually makes things worse. So let's go back and try participation. So reconstrain F, unconstrain part, save and run, model fit, chi-square, 238, and same degrees of freedom. Ah, look at this. Our p-value jumped 0.7. That was the problem. Participation is viewed somewhat differently between these two groups. So. If we had a metric invariance problem, we would go release participation and say we now have partial metric invariance.